Big surprise! SpaceX has just made a major adjustment to Ship 35 following recent testing issues. All efforts are now being accelerated to stay on track for the estimated launch later this year. Meanwhile, a Soviet-era Venus probe is falling back to Earth due to a damaged parachute. Over on the moon, NASA is working to recover the Lunar Trailblazer orbiter. Let's dive into all the latest updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Just a few days ago, SpaceX made an important move in preparing for Flight 9 with a powerful static fire test of S-35. However, as many observers noted, and as later analysis confirmed, there were issues with the engines during the test. As a result, on May 2nd, S-35 was transported back to the production site. At the time, many speculated that the vehicle would undergo modifications, and those predictions were right. It now appears that SpaceX has delivered a new engine to Starbase, likely a Raptor vacuum engine, based on the size and shape of the crate. This engine is presumed to replace the one that failed during the recent test. This adjustment is clearly intended to improve the reliability of the upcoming flight. Keep in mind, the engines have been a recurring issue in the last two launches. During Flight 8, for example, engine bay footage revealed a small flame in the Raptor vacuum area shortly before a series of engine failures led to the ship losing control and ultimately failing its mission. This latest engine swap, along with any additional modifications SpaceX may make, such as new shielding, fire suppression, and improved venting, demonstrates the team's determination to address these persistent technical issues. The replacement likely happened quickly and may even be complete by the time you're watching this video. However, this change also means another static fire test will almost certainly be required to validate the engine replacement and ensure system readiness. If the new engine is already installed, the static fire could take place as soon as this week. This development boosts confidence that Flight 9 could still launch within the month. Adding to that momentum, official navigation warnings have been issued for the Indian Ocean, the designated landing zone for S-35 similar to previous flights. These notices cover a two-week window from the 9th to the 22nd of May, with flight times expected to occur during local morning hours, providing excellent viewing conditions for the ship's return. While a navigation warning isn't a guarantee of launch, it's a strong indicator of intent. Official confirmation from SpaceX and the FAA is still pending, but this two-week launch window strongly suggests the company is working toward a May liftoff. A May 9th launch seems ambitious given the recent setback, but the latter half of the window, particularly the final few days, looks very promising. My personal prediction stands at the 20th of this month, which comfortably fits within the proposed timeline. What do you think? Drop your predictions in the comments down below. This update caught many by surprise, myself included. After seeing the engine problems on S-35, I assumed SpaceX would require more time to diagnose and fix the issue, possibly delaying Flight 9 into next month, but given the current pace, a May launch remains well within reach. Looking at the projected timeline, if the engine test at Massey goes well this week, S-35 could be cleared to return to the production site for integration of key systems like the flight termination system and payload. I estimate that phase could take place between the 10th and the 15th of this month. After that, the ship would move to the launch pad for final checks. Meanwhile, B-14 also appears ready for its next milestone. It completed key inspections in mid-April, and its hot staging ring has been installed, as recent imagery confirms. If all goes according to plan, B-14 could roll out to the launch pad by the 15th. Once both stages are in place, the full stack will be assembled. Final preparations, including a full wet dress rehearsal, would then likely occur from around the 15th to the 20th. That timeline keeps the original May 20th launch prediction well within the realm of possibility. Fingers crossed that everything proceeds smoothly. We've now waited more than two months for this next Starship launch. With every passing day, the excitement builds. Hopefully all the hard work pays off and Flight 9 not only lifts off soon, but delivers a successful mission that moves the program forward. If you're as ready as I am, type here we go in the comments and let's kick off the countdown together. As always, thank you to everyone who continues to support our channel. Thanks to you, we've recently passed the 170k subscriber milestone, an incredible achievement that we're deeply grateful for. Your support is what powers this journey, and we're excited to keep bringing you the latest updates on SpaceX and the broader aerospace world. Let's aim even higher. Our next goal is 200k. 
With your continued support, we can get there and bring even more coverage of Starship's explosive progress and SpaceX's journey toward the stars. Thanks again and stay tuned for more exciting developments. Now let's turn our attention to an unexpected update from space history. An aging Soviet Venus probe appears to be on its way back to Earth. Recent satellite tracking data and imagery suggest that Cosmos 482, a spacecraft launched by the former Soviet Union in 1972, is finally re-entering Earth's atmosphere. Originally intended to land on Venus, the mission never made it past Earth orbit due to a failed rocket stage during launch. As a result, a portion of the spacecraft, specifically the lander module, has remained in orbit around Earth for over 50 years. This capsule, designed to survive the extreme heat and pressure of Venus, was built with a robust structure and thermal shielding. That resilience is now of renewed interest as experts consider the possibility that the object could survive re-entry through Earth's atmosphere and land relatively intact. Marco Langbroek, a satellite tracker from SatTrack Cam Leiden in the Netherlands, provided key insights into the situation. As this is a lander that was designed to survive passage through the Venus atmosphere, it is possible that it will survive re-entry through the Earth atmosphere intact and impact intact, Langbrook said. However, he added that many factors remain uncertain, particularly due to the shallow angle of re-entry and the age of the capsule. He currently estimates that re-entry will occur around May 10th with a margin of error of plus or minus 2.2 days. Adding more intrigue, fellow Dutch satellite tracker Ralph Vandenberg captured the first high-resolution images of the lander in orbit. We see a clear compact ball. This set is already fantastic, I think, he reported. In his images, Vandenberg compares the object to a Starlink satellite bus, which is about 1.3 meters by 2.7 in size and orbits at a slightly higher altitude, approximately 80 miles or 130 kilometers farther out. What Vandenberg saw stunned him. Several frames seem to confirm what I saw in 2014, that there is a compact ball, but several frames show a weak elongated structure on one side of the object. He believes it's possible this feature could be a partially deployed parachute, though the images are not yet conclusive. He also noted the object could be tumbling, which might cause the parachute or remnants of it to occasionally become visible in certain frames. While the spacecraft's return is fascinating from a historical standpoint, it could also hold scientific significance. If the capsule survives re-entry and is recovered, it could provide rare insights into the long-term durability of spacecraft materials after decades in space. Additionally, any onboard systems or shielding that remain intact would offer valuable data for future deep space mission planning. Beyond the engineering curiosity, there is a deeper planetary science angle. Venus remains one of the least understood planets in our solar system. With its dense, toxic atmosphere and surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead, it presents a major challenge to robotic and human exploration alike. Studying components of Cosmos 482, especially those built to withstand the Venusian environment, could shed light on how to design next-generation probes and landers. Moreover, understanding Venus better can help us learn more about Earth. Often called Earth's twin, Venus has a similar size and composition, but took a very different evolutionary path. Learning why Venus became a hostile world could offer clues about Earth's past or its potential future, especially in the context of climate change and atmospheric science. But first, we must see how Cosmos 482 handles its dramatic return. Will the, la Will the lander's tough exterior survive the blazing heat of re-entry? Will any part of it remain recoverable for further study? One thing is certain, after more than five decades in orbit, Cosmos 482's return is not just a historical moment, it's a rare opportunity. So stay tuned, the skies may soon deliver a remarkable piece of space history back to Earth. And for our final item of today, let's take a closer look at developments concerning NASA's moon missions. While much attention has been focused on Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost mission, another significant effort has faced its own set of challenges. NASA's IM-2 mission, 
One of its key components, the Lunar Trailblazer Orbiter, has run into serious trouble and is currently the focus of an ongoing recovery effort by the agency. Launched on February 26th aboard a Falcon 9 rocket, the IM-2 mission carried several payloads, including the 200kg Lunar Trailblazer. Designed to orbit the moon and study its surface water, the spacecraft began experiencing problems just a day after deployment. It failed to properly orient itself toward the sun, which meant its solar panels could not absorb enough energy to keep its systems running. However, NASA hasn't given up on the mission. In a public update released on the 30th of April, the agency explained that current solar lighting conditions from May through mid-June are expected to improve. These conditions may allow enough sunlight to recharge the orbiter's batteries, potentially bringing it back to life. The statement added, if the ability to command the spacecraft can be re-established, the propulsion system is thawed and the instruments are operable, it may be possible to return the spacecraft to an elliptical lunar orbit and complete its lunar science objectives. Efforts are now focused on pinpointing the orbiter's current position using ground-based tracking systems. Once that's accomplished, NASA will attempt to re-establish communication. A formal continuation or termination review will follow, likely in June, to determine whether the mission can proceed or must be called off. If communication is restored and the spacecraft is still functional, the $94 million Lunar Trailblazer could resume its primary science mission, including mapping water ice on the moon, an essential resource for future lunar exploration. Alternatively, it may be redirected to fulfill new science goals. As of now, we're in a waiting period, but if NASA succeeds in reviving the orbiter, it would be a remarkable comeback for a mission many feared was lost. Let's hope the sunlight brings this trailblazing spacecraft back online. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.